Hi everyone, how are you all doing? Hope you're all fine and well. So the title of today's uh, live is, Are We Here to Learn Self-Love? Now, um, it's been a week that I've been diving into this idea, because you know how we're all always looking for our purpose. Like, what's my purpose here? Is it to help others? Is it to do this? Is it to, you know, to invent this? Is it to open this? Is it to, like, we're all, look, is it to be with my soulmate? Is it, who knows, right? And we're always searching for the external world of what we're meant to be doing and our purpose here. And it is all fun. All these external things and delights to do are so much fun and so worthy of our time. However, my question has been, truly, what is our true purpose? Why are we here? Why don't we remember anything about anything? Why is it so hard for a lot of people to get in touch with their intuition, where their egoic mind and the traumas and the identities and the limiting beliefs are more in control than our spiritual awareness, than our spirit being fully aware to us why we're here. And that it's like, it feels like a lot of effort to go into the paradigm of trusting and surrendering to life, trusting the gut feeling, trusting our heart, following through with all that stuff. So I was wondering, I'm sitting with myself, I'm like, what is going on? Plus, I'm going into the whole astrology thing, as I've shared before, and there's this whole Venus retrograde that started a few days ago. In addition, I'm listening to um, Cyrus Joy, and I went into their app because it's $3.99 for, the, for this month specifically, and I, I signed up and I'm listening to them every day, and it all has to do with the heart coherency. So as I'm doing all this and I'm, I'm learning new things and I'm, I'm trying to identify what is our purpose here? You know, what is the reason we're here? And self-love makes the most sense because whenever I think, oh my God, my purpose is to learn how to love myself, respect myself. There's a part of me that doesn't completely understand it because we've been programmed in this planet that loving yourself is equivalent to being selfish but it's a very wrong paradigm it's a it, it, it's 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 the upside down of truth right being selfish and i've shared this many times i even have like a um a free uh guide to help maybe i'll maybe i'll link it here i'm not sure anyway selfish is like it's the, the, the polar opposite of what self-love looks like. Selfish is where nobody else matters. What they feel doesn't matter. Who they are doesn't matter. Nothing about anyone else matters in any form. And not because I matter so much. Actually the opposite. I don't matter so much that everyone else doesn't matter even more so that I can at least feel an iota of I matter to me. So by putting people down, stepping over people, um, not having values, uh, not having, you know, not being dishonest, uh, uh, manipulating, gaslighting, whatever you may call it, right? So there, there's like this opposite thing. So selfish is more of like, I don't matter to anyone, so nobody's going to matter to me and I'm going to grab everything for me and it doesn't have to be look this aggressive right because some, a lot of people are not this aggressive about it but that's the inside aggression right it's i don't matter so much that nobody else should matter that is selfish self-love is so different so different and i know it takes time for us to understand what self-love is because we've been so feared out of self-love right even when we were little like when we would choose us it'd be like no, I really don't want to wear that or I don't want to say that or I don't want to say hi to that person. I don't want to be around that person. We were like shamed out of it. Like, no, you know, that's being selfish, right? Or I don't feel like eating the broccolis or I don't feel like you're being selfish. You know, mommy cooked all day and all this stuff, whatever it is, right? So we were given what self, what we were doing, which is self-loving ourselves, which is understanding who we are, understanding our boundaries, you know, being polite about it, but expressing our truth was dictated as selfish. 
So now when you tell people, learn how to self-love, a lot of empaths and light workers freak out, <laughs> including me. It took me a few years to like understand it truly in my heart, like what it actually means. Now, logically, I'm starting to understand the depth of it, right? Because it's all like, oh my God, but that's me being selfish. If I don't include others, if I don't put them, put them ahead of me, right? Prioritize their needs first, like always be attuned to everybody else first before myself. And I think because the program is like that, then the opposite must be true. If the program is uh, put yourself second or last, uh, care about what everybody else says, you know, do this, do that for everybody else, then the opposite must be true about our purpose. So let's just say our purpose is self-love. How would that look like? How would self-loving purpose look like? It would be understanding what the program within each individual it looks like due to our timeline, due to our ancestral DNA, due to a whole bunch of stuff from the day we're born onto the planet and from the womb, what we've absorbed, right? And understanding that that's all the program that has shielded us from knowing that we are spirits. Like we all know it, but we don't know it, right? We all know, but we don't know in our deepest of hearts that we are souls having a human experience. We know it intellectually, right? We can say it to each other, but is the knowing in the heart? Is it a truth? So how do we know it's a truth? Is when we start to self-love. What does it mean to self-love? When I can choose me, my truth, my honesty, above all else does not mean that I hurt somebody in the process, that I have to um, compare myself to someone else that I put someone else down. That's, that's totally different. You know, that has nothing to do with anything. That's just anger and emotions that need, needs healing. Right. But self-love means that when I am feeling a thing, let's say somebody triggers me, right? There are still lots of people who trigger me, but let's just say an example, somebody triggers me and says something that really hurts my feelings. And I start to get really mad, right? This really mad version of me is my responsibility to pour love on. That is self-love. Self-love is whatever I am going through emotionally, me is taking care of me, is loving me anyway. This is how it looks like. Oh my God, you're so angry, Rain. It's okay, I love you, sweetheart. You can be angry, you're allowed to be angry. Oh my God, of course this made you angry. I'm not going to solve it for myself. I'm not going to fix it. And most of all, I'm not going to judge and blame myself for it. That's where self-hate and self-loathing comes in. That's why self-love, it feels exhausting, but it feels so good inside once we de- uh, like, what is it called? Like when once we like, I'm seeing this. It's like you're taking a, a metallic object and opening it up and they unplug, right? Once we detangle, let's say, but it's not the specific word. Once we unlock, once we unlock ourselves from the program, which is I'm unworthy, nobody loves me, there's something wrong with me, uh, I am, I'm unhealthy, I'm poor, I'm this, whatever the I am's that we've accumulated, right? Like this huge bag of I am terrible in a sense, right? Once we unlock that and release it and open it up, then our spirit comes, right? And when our spirit comes, then we see all those versions of us that we hate, like, oh, she's, I'm so, I'm so bossy. I'm so passive. I'm such a shy person. I'm ridiculous. Nobody wants to be with me. Oh my God, I'm going to be alone. All, all this stuff. Once you unlock it and you see it, you pour love on these versions of you that are in pain because nobody else has, right? When you go complain to a friend or a parent when you were younger, they'd be like, You'd be like, oh, nobody wants to play with me in school or I feel so alone. You'll be like, why? But you're so lovely and amazing. You know, put more effort. And maybe if you share your things, maybe if you're nicer, maybe if you're sweet, like we, 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 we blame the person that is suffering. We're going to relearn all this right now because all that just made it worse for ourselves as adults. And when we, once we learn it for ourselves, we can learn it with other, with kids. We can be different with the children. So let's say 
the difference is you're going to come back and be like, nobody likes me at work. Oh my God, I feel so lonely and isolated. What you do with you, this is self-love. What you do with you is, oh my God, I am so sorry you're going through this. You know, and it must really hurt you. And I completely understand. And I am here for you. I love you. I'm taking care of you. And that's okay. I get it. You're basically just allowing that version of you, the one in pain, to be acknowledged, be heard, and be seen. That's one idea, one great concept of what self-love looks like. Another aspect of self-love, which I'm trying to make sure that you understand it, where you don't feel that you're being selfish, right? Another aspect of self-love is where my no's and yeses, your no's and yeses are respected by you first. If you're not the kind of person who can say an immediate no and an immediate yes, you know how there are those people that are on the spot, they know things and they just know how to respond back. And you know, a lot of people are not like that. If you're not the type of person who can respond back because you, you're still getting to learn how to get in touch with you, the least you can do, which is honoring you and self-loving you is being like, oh, I don't have an answer right now. Give me a few minutes, give me a day, give me whatever. Because you get to know you. And then you go back and you, you self-reflect. Like, do I want to go on that trip with that person? Do I want to take that job? Do I want to go to that restaurant? Like, it's as if with you and you, that is self-loving, right? So that you're honest. You become an honest person with you. But you have to self-reflect at the beginning. It's a training, right? Until it becomes natural where you start to really know the things you love, the things you agree with. What is your yeses and your noes to life where it just becomes such a natural thing to say no or yes to things later on. But this is just learning like, wait a minute, why do I have to say yes immediately in fear of them getting hurt or upset or whatever the, the reasons are, the limiting beliefs, the thoughts, right? The worries and the concerns and the fears. Why can't I give myself the opportunity to hear what I want to say uh, to myself first, like, do I want to say yes to all my kids' friends coming over or do I not, right? Am I in the mood for that or am I not? Like, first, me. You know, that's self-loving. It's like me and me. And then it's, if it's a yes, I'm like, you know, yeah, I'm in the mood to have, like, liveliness in the house and I'm in the mood to cater and put music, then it's a yes. You know what? I'm not in that mood right now. I just don't feel like clear, cleaning up and having all that noise and mess and maybe do it somewhere else then no, right? But that's, that's another way of self-love where you, you go back to you, you know, you are an equal and a priority with everyone else. So the first one is whatever you're feeling, right? You love yourself, you accept it. Second one is, is your no's and yeses. You refer back to you. You give yourself space before responding immediately, right? Which is still polite to the other person. And giving yourself also your an equal politeness to you. Like, let me, let me, let me know about me. Like, am I cool with this? Can I handle it or can I not? Right? Do I want this or do I not? Maybe tomorrow you will. Maybe today you don't. You know, we all shift and change. Another way, another wonderful way of self-loving is, is when you notice that you need that time alone, or you need to do something just for you, and guilt shows up. Now, the trick is when guilt shows up. Now, when guilt shows up because you're about to do something just for you, which is like, let's say you're a mom and we're very guilt-driven most of the time, and you need that half an hour alone time, without it being like, kids, enough! Like, like you're choosing your well-being, right? And it could just be like, kids, I'm just going to take half an hour, I'm going to go meditate or paint or walk a block or talk on the phone, whatever, or paint my nails. And I just don't want to be interrupted because I just want to be with myself because I need to gather myself back. I need to, my, my thoughts are everywhere. And I just need to bring myself back, right? The, that part is where you, you can choose your state of being at any given time by announcing the truth to others. A lot of times what we do is, even though we're feeling it, like, oh, I'm so agitated, I just want to, I'll get this, I'll finish dinner, and I'll clean this, and blah, 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 so I can have my time, but then it doesn't end. And by then, you're so riled up that anything the kids do, or that your partner does, or a friend calls, or whatever, you're, like, ready to blow. You're like, I said, leave me alone, right? 
before heading there, you know, get in touch with you. Be like, okay, there's an aggravation coming here. I'm allowed to feel it, you know, I'm allowed to feel this aggravation. What would help me now, you know? putting my hands in, in, on, in the earth, uh, taking a bath, meditating, uh, doing my nails, taking that walk, making the phone call to a friend. It doesn't even matter. You just know you. And then give yourself, before the guilt comes in, right? You're choosing it now for yourself. Why? Because you're loving you. You're not harming anyone. You can just say, kids, friends, partners, whatever. I just need this half an hour, one hour, one day. It doesn't matter with whoever you're talking to. If you have kids, of course, it's half an hour or an hour. You could do two. I just need this time for me because mommy's feeling overwhelmed and I'm getting pretty agitated because I'm looking forward for time for me and I'm incapable of doing it right now. So I need this time so I can be more available to you because I need to be available to me. That's another way. You don't have to say it that way, but you can at least know that this is the kind of conversation you're going to have with self. You're going to have that conversation with you, right? You're going to prioritize you. Why? Because your well-being will reflect on everyone else around you, right? So that's another aspect of self-love. It doesn't mean it is selfish. It is self-loving. As I said at the beginning of the video, when we are selfish, nobody else matters. We don't even matter. Like we get angry and pissed and eh, it's not fair, you know, and we become like two-year-old tantrumy people. Narcissists are like that. They're two-year-old tantrumy people all the time. You can't possibly believe that they love themselves. It looks like they do from the outside, right? Because they say no easily. They say yes easily. It looks like they do easily from the outside. But internally, going around having to lie and cheat and be dishonest and gaslight and manipulate others doesn't ever mean that the person inside is at peace with who they are, right? It could be honest about who they are and not freak out from the consequences or need to deceive others just to present a certain image, which they're not, right? Because if that image is broken, they would die, right? So it's very different, selfish from self-love, right? Once you start to offer yourself self love, meaning I, I care for me when I'm feeling certain things. I can be honest about who I am and how I feel. I can honestly tell someone, give me some time to get back to you because I matter too, right? I have to self-reflect. Well, before I hit guilt, I need to be aware. What am I feeling? How am I feeling? Am I overwhelmed? Am I stressed? Am I frustrated? Before I lose it, I need to be aware and be like, wait, how can I love me now? Me is looking for love now. How can I do it? And then you, you do, you can write a list of all the things that, that give you inner peace or joy or disconnect you from worries and concern and choose one of them that resonates at this moment in time. That is self-loving. So our purpose here on the planet, I believe so far, and I'm constantly growing and expanding and learning, but so far, what I feel has been given to me to understand, and probably because Venus is retrograding in Leo, so there's a lot of information coming out, and Venus is all about love and relationships and relationship to yourself. What I'm understanding is one of the main spiritual movements is to learn how to self-love. Because once I know how to love me properly, respect me, right, naturally I will love others and respect others. It's like... The, the the consequence of it is that will I be able to go to war with anyone? Impossible because because I love them because of how much I love myself. I respect them. I honor them. Could I lie anymore? Could I be deceitful? Could I be manipulative? Could I do any of that? Hardly ever because now between me and myself, I'm not searching for others to like me and love me. I'm giving it to me. So I have it for free to give to others because I've learned how to give it to me. That's self-love. This is going to stop a lot of the crazy stuff that's happening in the world. I mean, one of the things that drives me insane is like summer vacations or seasons or whatever. You know, all the hotels heighten up their price and tickets heighten up their price. And it's like, why? You know, you've dedicated these months and these vacations for the human race to travel in because they're all working or in school. And then you heighten the prices where it's so unaffordable or too expensive and just ridiculous. 
you know, to make the money. And it's a very manipulative strategy. If that stopped happening because everybody wasn't hungry, you know, to feel worthy and of value from the outside world, and you could do it for yourself inside because you're learning. It's a learning. You're, you know, just learn it. You know, I love me. I can be kind to me. Your language with yourself, once it changes, it changes with the outside world completely. So another aspect of self-love is notice my thoughts. Start to notice what are your thoughts saying? So your thoughts are always talking, right? Are they 3D dense energy conversations, right? Or are they giving you loving information? Most likely, they're very dense. Ah, oh, your friends don't like you. Oh, they didn't call you. Nobody cares about you. Uh, the weather is rainy today. Oh, look, God doesn't enjoy you. You're not supposed to have a good time. You're this, this, this. There's something wrong with you. You didn't do it good enough. People didn't praise you enough. There's something wrong with you. You need to change this. You need to do this. You need to blah, 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 blah. blah. And the brain is judgment, judgment, blame, shame, shame, shame all the time. You're wrong all the time. Even if somebody compliments you, you can't accept it fully because they're like, they don't know the real me or something else. Just notice, right? Just notice these thoughts. So another way to self-love is when you start to notice you are being extremely abusive to you, mean, mean and cruel to yourself. Notice the thoughts because you're going to notice your energy. Your whole energy starts to contract. You start to go downwards. You start to get aches and pains, right? And you get a headache. Everything like, it's all of a sudden your whole body doesn't function. Why? Because you're, you're harming it. You're being aggressively abusive to it. You're being narcissistic to your own self, right? Notice the thoughts. Another way to self-love is notice the thoughts, see the thoughts, and say the opposite of the thought to yourself. Let's, for example, let's say my thoughts are saying, um, you could have done it better. You could have done it better. Oh, you're being so lazy. Why didn't you do it any better than this? And I start to notice, I'm like, what is that? Like, why am I being so mean to me? And I notice, oh, you could have done better. And then immediately I can say, Rain, you did, you did pretty well. I'm so proud of you. You actually accomplished it and you finished it. You know, you're so amazing. I'm so proud of you. And the minute I do that, I visualize myself as a little four-year-old, five-year-old who's like been dying for someone to just be kind to her, you know, and not say, well, yeah, you should have gotten an A on that test. What is wrong with you? But like, you know what? A B is fabulous. A C is great. Good job. You tried it. You did it, you know, and maybe next time you could do better. I'm sure you can. And that's okay. So it's, it's being kinder to you. And the good way to start is when you notice the thoughts. Please notice our, your thoughts. Our thoughts are just so mean. So mean. If you could spend a day writing everything that your thoughts tell you, you're going to be like, oh my God, it feels like I'm married to a malignant narcissist. Right? So don't be surprised if you are with narcissists because it's just the reflection of our thoughts to ourselves. So... These are simple ways in which you can start to understand what self-love looks like. Why do we want to do this? Because we are consumed with the program that makes us feel crap about who we are, afraid of life, afraid of the future, regretful of the past, just blech. What we want to do, where we want to go, is we want to feel free of all this stuff. And the only way to feel free is when all this horrible language, I can notice and you start loving it, right? This way our soul and our spirit expands and it becomes the one enjoying this earth journey, not the egoic self that is all self-destructive. I hope this is making sense. I hope this is really making sense. Um, I'm going to have to rewatch because uh, I know what I said, but I'm not really sure because... It just feels like information pours out through me when I when I go on lives, especially if I'm so passionate about something. And I've been passionate about self-love forever. Um, I was calling it self-trust at first, and now I'm moving into self-love. So self-trust also, you gotta trust who you are. You gotta trust what your heart is saying. Once you start to recognize the difference between what your mind is saying all the time, the rubbish it's saying, 
And the difference between the heart intuition, which is more loving and kind and generous, okay, and you trust that this is truth, not, oh, of course I'm going to tell myself lovely things. No, of course you're not going to tell yourself lovely things. Most of the time you're telling yourself horrible things. Try to tell yourself lovely things a few times a day. So let's try this exercise. Venus is in retrograde for 40 days. For the next 40 days, I'm going to try to come on live more often. But for the next 40 days, if it's possible, well, it's 38 now, but 48 days, if it's possible for you on a daily basis to give yourself something to compliment yourself about or give yourself a hug every day and be like, I love you. I love you. You can say, I am lovable, I am loved, and I am loving. You can say, um, you can say your name, like, Rain, I appreciate you, and I thank you for taking care of me on this journey. Thank you, body. Thank you for this life. Like, thank you, th thank yourself, you know, like, be appreciative of you. Say, I am... I am so blessed that I am shy. Da 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 da, if you have a shy problem, you know? I feel so blessed that I am, you know, a procrastinator. I feel so blessed that I am an extrovert. I feel so blessed that I have the privilege of experiencing um, boredom. Um, like, try to play with yourself. See where it clicks because it, you'll feel it in your heart. You, your heart will go, oh, I like that. I like that, you know? When you, when you show kindness to you, you'll feel it in your heart. I like that. You'll feel, and then your brain will come in and be like, that's such a lie. You're such a liar. It's not true. Forget that. Go with the heart. What we're trying to do is expand and open our heart. Okay? Expand and open our heart towards ourselves because naturally we will mirror that to the world. Just remember that is not being selfish. That being self-loving. And for all the parents out there, men and women, if you want to teach your children how to self-love, self-respect, have their boundaries up, you really got to know how to do it yourself to know how to offer them those gifts. So start with you. And it'll just naturally pour onto those that you love around you. Okay? Don't forget, doesn't mean you have to love narcissists and toxic people and people you don't know. That is where you listen to your heart again. You love you. If you get a thing where you crunch when you're around someone, choose you. You say, oh, it doesn't feel right. Hmm. I can't spend that much time around that person, you know, because it's not for my highest good because I love me. I, I, I am, I'm important too. My energy matters too, right? If I'm around a narcissist and I feel like every time I'm around them, I'm depleted, I'm defending myself, I'm arguing for my, my sanity and my truth, they're like, is this self-loving? No, you know, self-loving means... I respect me. I respect how I think. I respect how I feel. And right now I'm not feeling well in this environment, in this relationship, thinking these thoughts, doing that thing. I'm going to I'm going to just uproot myself and take me somewhere where where I can feel better, right? I can choose my happiness a little bit, right? So just make sure that you're not pouring your love all over everyone that doesn't deserve it because you start to pour it onto yourself a little bit and it will just cascade to everyone else. This way you're going to learn how to be extremely honest, truthful, because you've got your back, right? Because you care about you. You, have, you respect how you feel. You respect how you think. You respect what you like and dislike. And you have the, the privilege of being honest, of just being honest. And if somebody is triggered by it, that's their work to do, right? their work to do if you say no I'm not in the mood to go to that restaurant they're like oh but I've gone to all the restaurants for you and be like mm, that's your trigger you know that's for you to deal with it's not for me I'm teaching myself how to be honest how to respect who I am how to respect my voice how to respect my heart I'm not saying it's easy but that's a beautiful purpose to follow right I think so so Please let me know, do you agree with what self-love looks like? And this could be one of the many things that our purpose is like. You know, are you having a hard time understanding self-love? Does it, do you feel guilty for it? Are you ashamed of it? Do you feel like you're being selfish? Do you need to know a little bit more about what self-love look, actually looks like? Just don't forget, you can leave me all your questions, all your comments in the comments below. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, a heart, maybe even a hug. Is there another icon? No, I think those three are good. 
Um, if you enjoyed this, if this is helpful for you, please let me know. Share your questions, your insights, and um, hopefully I'll see you next week. Let's see. Take care, beautiful souls. Bye.